the transmission particular this particular transmission system of an atom wire is very important system to transmit power from the engine that is power source that is there in the particular atom wire that is the engine of the engine of the rear wheel so whatever the construction of that particular is there so the transmission particularly we start with the first thing you need that is Title of this particular presentation transmission. So, from the transmission, the first unit, first sub unit that we are going to discuss today is the clutch. Now, this particular clutch, if we consider why the requirement of clutch is there in any atom wire. First thing is there, why do we need a clutch? So, this clutch is a very useful device with two rotating shafts. With two rotating shafts. Uh, particularly, one of the shaft is driven by a motor or pulley, and the other shaft is the driving another device. Consider in case of a drilling machine, as you studied drilling machine in earlier years, uh, one shaft is driven by the motor and the other is driving the drill shaft. Same way, the clutch connects the two shafts so that they can either be locked together and spin at the same speed or couple and spin at the different speeds. Okay. In atom wire or in car, you need a clutch because the engine spins all the time, but the car wheels don't. The engine spins all the time. See, the engine spins this way. This way. So, this engine spins all the time. This is very important. Engine spins all the time, but car wheels don't. So, in order for a car to stop without stopping the engine, in order for a car to stop without stopping the engine, the wheels need to be disconnected. This is important. Wheels need to be disconnected from the engine somehow. So the clutch allows us to smoothly engage a spinning engine to a non-spinning transmission by controlling the slippage between them. Okay, so that's why the clutch is required in an atom wire. What exactly is a clutch? It is a mechanical device which provides the power of transmission from one component to the another component. That is from the driving member to the driven member when engaged, but it can be disengaged. Now, whenever an atom wire gets started, whenever engine gets started at that time, the initial state, 
the clutch is always in engaged position. Clutch is always in engaged position. So when engine starts, when flywheel, whatever component is there, we so are going to see that component. So when flywheel rotates, clutch which is mounted on the flywheel also rotates. So clutches are used whenever the transmission of power or motion must be controlled either in some amount or over time. Like, like uh, you can consider the screwdriver uh, limit, electric screwdriver limit, how much torque is transmitted through use of the clutch. Clutch is controlled whether automobiles transmit engine power to the wheel or not. So very simple manner, a simple way you can say that clutches connect and disconnect two rotating shafts. Two rotating shafts can be connected or disconnected therefore this clutch. One shaft is attached to a motor or other power unit while the other shaft provides output power for the work. So driving member and driven member, two members are there. So transmit power for the output, for getting the work as the output. So basically clutch is used to engage or disengage the engine to the transmission or gearbox. Okay. When the clutch is in engaged position, the engine power or rotary motion of engine crankshaft is transmitted to the gearbox and then to the wheels. When clutch is disengaged, the engine power does not reach to gearbox and to the wheels, though the engine still runs. It means that Whenever disengagement of clutch is there, engine will not stop, engine will run. So, whenever it is in engaged position, clutch will rotate. But when it is disengaged, the power flow will not be there from engine. Again, clutch is also used to allow the shifting or changing of gears when vehicle is running. What exactly happens when we shift the gears? For shifting the gears, clutch is first disengaged, then gear is shifted, and then clutch is engaged. This clutch has to be disengaged to stop the vehicle and also at the time of idling. Now coming to the working principle of this clutch. Working principle of clutch is very simple. You can easily remember it works on the principle, it operates in the principle of friction. When two friction surfaces are brought in contact of each other, and are held against each other due to the friction between them, they can be used to transmit power. If one gets rotated, if one is rotated, also the other element, other surface also gets rotated. One surface is connected to the engine and other to the transmission system of atom by. So in the other way, we can say clutch is nothing but a combination of two friction surfaces. Combination of two friction surfaces. We can see over here, if I draw, these two surfaces are there. Okay. One is flywheel. This is clutch. Now this is in disengage position. This is in disengage position. When engage position is there, how will be the? See, these two 
here friction material will be there. This is flywheel. This is clutch. Now here I am showing engage position when flywheel rotates. When engine gets started from here, shaft will be there. Here the shaft will be there. Here the shaft is there. Okay. Here flywheel rotates when disengage position is there. Here flywheel rotates, but clutch will not rotate. Clutch will not rotate. It means that it is in this is the friction surface. It means that clutch is in disengage, disengage, and this is engage. Okay. So when in engage position, flywheel will rotate. Clutch is in connection with this flywheel due to the friction. When flywheel starts rotation, clutch also starts rotation. Got the working principle of clutch. I hope so. The clutch works on the principle of friction. Now, the purpose of clutch is there to allow the vehicle to come to a stop while the transmission remains in gear. Allow the driver to smoothly take off from a dead stop or from a stopping position. Allow the driver to smoothly change gears and must not sleep under heavy loads and full engine power. Okay. Now today we'll see the single plate clutch. There are different types of clutches like single plate clutch, multiple clutch, multi-plate clutch, then cone clutch, centrifugal clutch. So out of that today we are going to study the single plate clutch. Uh, various uh, parts are there, various elements are there for the single plate clutch like the pressure plate, friction plate or clutch plate. Then driving shaft, driven shaft, hub, bushes, springs, fortune springs, etc. So this is the diagram of a single plate clutch. This is the diagram of a single plate clutch. Now in this particular diagram, you can see over here, The flywheel, flywheel, this is the flywheel. So from this particular shaft, you can see this as the engine shaft. From engine, when engine gets started, when engine starts, okay. So from engine, shaft comes out and on this shaft, this flywheel is mounted. So when the shaft rotates, this flywheel also rotates. And see, the clutch assembly, this is the clutch assembly, it is bolted with the flywheel. It is bolted with the flywheel. So when particularly this engine shaft and this clutch shaft, when flywheel rotates and when clutch is in connection with the flywheel, rotary flywheel, this clutch assembly will also rotate. This clutch assembly will also rotate. Now here, one surface is shown friction lining. This is the pressure plate. Okay. So in engage position, when flywheel rotates, clutch will also rotate. Now the single plate clutch consists of the parts like pressure plate, friction lining, bearing, clutch plate, clutch spring, like this. Okay, so single plate dry clutch works on the principle of friction. When two friction surfaces are brought in contact of each other, when one revolves, other also revolves. This is the working principle.
it has one clutch plate and it works on the principle of friction and it is the most common type of clutch that is being used in automobiles two principal elements as i just now mentioned one is mounted on the driving shaft and the other on the driven shaft driving shaft that is from engine on which the flywheel is mounted and driven shaft the clutch shaft on which the clutch is mounted these two shafts are parallel and concentric with each other one is fixed to its housing while the other is spline other is spline this is important the other shaft is spline having splines cut on its outer surface so that it can move axially whatever driving torque is required that can be increased by increasing the effective radius of the contact as in previous diagram you have seen different parts are required different parts are there for the proper working of single plate clutch and these parts are arranged very systematically it has a clutch plate having both side of friction lining and some other parts to help in proper functioning of a clutch the other parts like the flywheel pressure plate bearing hub springs and mechanism for engagement and disengagement of the clutch this clutch plate is attached to the hub between the flywheel and the pressure plate which moves axially on the driven shaft what is exactly there in single plate clutch in single plate clutch the clutch plate must have the clutch plate should have both side friction lining both side friction lining because it mounts between the pressure plate i will show you actual clutch assembly in this lecture of excel between the pressure plate and flywheel so friction lining is present so this clutch plate should have both side friction lining and friction is responsible for the transmission of torque pressure plate engages with the flywheel and springs pressure plate helps to push the clutch plate with the flywheel a lever attached to the thrust bearing with some mechanism on the driven shaft which transmits input and output motion from the clutch pedal so uh these are the parts of a clutch now you can see this particular wheel this is known as the flywheel now you can see here hollow portion is there so a shaft will be there now this flywheel has particularly on its outer side tooth like structure teeth are there so this particular gets mesh with the ring gear whenever engine starts that particular ring gear comes in contact of this flywheel and because of the meshing of these two this flywheel also starts its rotation on the flywheel itself we can see holes are there these are the holes so these holes are required because on the flywheel itself the clutch assembly will be bolted so clutch assembly will have also holes so that the bolt can be passed and that clutch assembly is bolted with the flywheel now this is the clutch plate okay now this is friction lining friction surface the material for the friction lining or friction surface is uh, a friction material like asbestos ferredo cork leather with coefficient of friction 
these are the torsion springs this is spline hub okay this is clutch plate so on this clutch plate on either side on both side this friction lining is there according to the design according to the requirement of the top transmission according to the requirement of that particular assembly the design of this friction lining or friction facing will be there okay so uh, flywheel is an integral part of the engine actually uh, which also used as a part of the clutch it is a driving member see it is a driving member and connects to the pressure plate the flywheel rotates as the engine crankshaft rotates so flywheel will rotate when the engine crankshaft will rotate the flywheel always will rotate in either case engage position or in disengage position then pilot bearing or pushing presses into the end of the crankshaft to support the end of the transmission in push shaft this pilot bearing prevents particularly the transmission shaft and clutch this from obling up and down when the clutch gets released it also helps the input shaft center of the disc on the flywheel then clutch plate or disc plate it is a driven member of the single plate clutch and lined with friction material on both surfaces as just now in previous uh, image i have shown friction material is there on both surfaces it has uh, one hub central hub having internal splines internal teeth like structure to limit the axial travel along the spline gearbox driving shaft this particular clutch plate or disc plate helps to provide damping actions against the torsional vibrations or if whatever variations occur because of the driving torque between the engine and transmission this is a plate between flywheel and friction or pressure plate series of facings are there on each side to enlarge the friction material for this friction lining or facing is as the first period of work and this must have the property heat resistant then pressure plate it is made up of special cast iron it is the heaviest part of the clutch assembly and the main function of the pressure plate is to form even contact with the driven plate facing through which the springs can exert the required amount of force to transmit the full torque of the engine the pressure plate presses the clutch plate onto the flywheel and between the pressure plate and clutch core assembly springs are created cover clutch cover assembly and clutch disc assembly is are two assemblies of a clutch uh, so clutch cover assembly is bolted to the flywheel and consists of pressure plate uh, uh, mechanism clutch cover and pressure spring the clutch plate revolves with the flywheel when the clutch is disengaged the flywheel as well as the pressure plate are free to rotate independently from the given plate then release levers are there these pivots on the pins with the clutch cover and whatever their outer ends are uh, to locate and position on the pressure plate legs proper uh, adjustment of this release mechanism is important thing to get a proper performance of any clutch assembly then clutch shaft is a component of the gearbox actually 
because after clutch gearbox will be there it is a spline shaft a shaft with teeth cut on its outer side a spline shaft to the hub of the clutch plate which is sliding on it one end of the clutch shaft is attached to the crank shaft or flywheel and other end connects with gearbox or forms a part of the gearbox three basic parts are required like flywheel friction disc or clutch plate and a friction plate some springs give axial force to maintain the clutch in the engaged position when the engine is running and because of running of engine flywheel will rotate the pressure plate also rotates as the pressure plate is attached to the flywheel okay now the friction disc is located between the flywheel and the pressure plate when the driving force is pushed down the clutch is released and this action forces the axial force the pressure pressure plate to move away from the friction disc because of the against the force of the pressure springs with this particular movement of the pressure plate the friction plate is released it moves away from the flywheel for a fraction of second for a while and the clutch gets disengaged when we move the foot away from the pedal the springs push the pressure plate against the clutch disc which successively presses against the flywheel and this locks up the engine to the transmission input shaft because of which what happens the clutch gets engaged and it also starts spinning it also starts rotating at the same speed as that of the flywheel so these are some uh, links for the study of transmission now exactly this working of clutch i will show you with the help of actual clutch assembly which is present with me right now before that see the particular working of clutch that just now i uh, explained as it works on the principle of friction as it works on the principle of friction consider these are the two friction surfaces these are the two friction surfaces consider this as the flywheel and this is the clutch assembly so flywheel it will have the engine shaft from this side it will have the engine shaft so when engine starts when engine get started the shaft will rotate and because of this this flywheel will also rotate now this clutch assembly which is mounted on the clutch shaft okay it's plain clutch shaft and then other end gearbox will be there so when this clutch shaft uh, sorry clutch comes in contact of this flywheel and because of friction when flywheel rotates when this flywheel gets rotated this clutch assembly also gets rotated but as soon as clutch pedal is pressed as soon as clutch pedal is pressed what happens this particular clutch assembly this clutch assembly gets separated from the flywheel for a while for a fraction of second because of which what will happen because of which thing is going to happen is like this this flywheel will be rotate continuously because engine is running but this clutch assembly will not be in contact with the flywheel and because of this 
there will not be any transmission of power from the engine towards the gearbox and other components. So there will be break up, there will be break in the power. There will not be flow of power, power flow will not be there. But as soon as we release the foot from the clutch pedal, what will happen? This clutch assembly will again come in contact of the plywood because of the spring force and both will start rotation. So this is the simple working principle of clutch. I hope you are understood the working principle of clutch. Now, <coughs> the principal elements that we have discussed in lecture, again, with the help of actual model, actual clutch assembly model, I'm going to explain which are these principal parts. This is the clutch cover. This is the clutch cover, okay? Now, on this clutch cover, you can see holes are there. These holes are provided so that this assembly can be bolted to the flywheel easily. Through these holes, a bolt can be passed and it is to attach with the flywheel. So this is cover assembly. Now, if you see, this is the pressure plate. This particular element component is the pressure plate. So in between this uh, assembly, you can see top cover is there, then this pressure plate is there. Now in single plate clutch, this is one type known as diaphragm spring type single plate clutch. I will show you this particular area, this particular element is the diaphragm spring. This is saucer-like in structure. If you see this view, this is not flat. This is just like a saucer. Okay, so it is a diaphragm spring. So whenever force will be applied at the center, here hub will be there, spline hub. Okay, and through this, a shaft will be passed. So whenever a force will be applied, whenever clutch pedal will be Place, what will happen to this saucer-like structure or saucer-like shape of the diaphragm spring? It will tend to become flat. It will tend to become straight. And whenever it will tend to become straight or flat, what will happen to this flywheel? What will happen to this flywheel? This flywheel will move towards this side. This flywheel will move towards this side because this particular diaphragm spring is tending to become flat. Spring force, we may say it as a spring force, because of the spring force, it will tend, this flywheel will tend to move towards this side. Okay, so what will happen now? This particular second component Other parts of the clutch assembly, this is the friction lining or friction facing. This is the friction lining or friction facing. These are two in numbers on both sides. Friction lining or friction facing is there. Just now I have told the material of friction lining or friction facing is asbestos, ferrado, or leather. Now the part that wears more in friction in particular, the clutch assembly is the friction lining or friction facing. Okay, so this particular part, this particular part, this particular part wears mostly in particular atom wide. Now, in this friction facing, there are two uh, friction lining, friction facing. These are the torsion springs. These are the torsion springs. So to absorb the torsional loads, whenever a vehicle goes on the road surface, whenever the brakes are applied, whenever clutch gets engaged and disengaged, so whatever torsional forces are getting developed, so those are absorbed 
partial load is absorbed by this particular spring. This is the hub, center most portion, spline hub through this uh, shaft will pass and axially the shaft will be free to rotate. So this has internally cut splines or teeth like structure, whereas on the shaft externally cut, uh, externally, uh, cut teeth like structure will be there. So this is the clutch plate, single clutch plate on both sides, friction lining is there, torsion spring, spline hub. Now this particular assembly, whenever a force will be applied at the center, whenever force will be applied at the particular this, this particular diaphragm spring will tend to become straight or flat and this will move away from the particular flywheel which will be there on this side. Flywheel is not there to show right now. So flywheel, this particular will move away from the flywheel. So contact will not be there for this particular assembly with the flywheel for a while. And during that period, the disengagement of clutch will be there. But whenever engagement will be there, through this clutch cover assembly, as it is bolted to the flywheel, both will rotate simultaneously. Both will rotate at the same speed. Now, I hope now everything is clear for this particular single plate clutch. Okay, now 